hey guys, I'm actually taking a page from you guys. You guys asked for it, so we're going to do story time. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. Like I said, I've been listening. You guys been asking for it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do a segment of story time. So we'll see how this works. Um, this is going to be number one story time. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. And then you guys can basically tell me what you actually think of it. And then we'll decide together like we do with everything else on this channel, whether we choose to keep this as a segment or what, okay? Um, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the story <clears throat> about the time that I actually got, it was weird, I got mistaken for a girl and then got shaded by my girlfriends. A fucking mess. A fucking mess. Let's get started. Okay, so let's see. You know, I'm always used to telling stories and I just give the names and all that, but we're going to be nice and I'm going to do story time the way that story time is done on YouTube. So we won't give the names, okay? But we'll just say um, I have the main girlfriend. There's a main girlfriend of mine. She says to me, hey, let's, um, we're going to go out. We're going to this new club. And um, we want you to come. So it's me. And then she had two other girlfriends that were actually going to be going. And I, I knew them. You know, I've been in their presence before. And I was like, okay, cool. No problem. So it will be the three of them and me. Now, let me just set the scene for you. Because back at this time, this was in the 90s. This was like in the mid-90s where... I, I, I've told you all before, I've gone through a period of, you know, you name it, I've done it. So, you know that I do female impersonation. So, of course, I have a drag persona. And then, you know, at that time, I was a hairdresser. I was still, I was doing hair and all of these things. So, I was still, I was in that, that gender bend kind of place. And basically just being me. You know, I was a hairdresser, so you name it, I had it. I wore my hair all different types of ways. My clothing was child. Most times when you see me, something I had on was girls and something I had on was boys. It was just a mishmash of, of whatever was going on. And that was just basically the best way to explain it. I wasn't in drag. I was just being my regular authentic self. And this is before I had my kids or any of that stuff. So more of gender bending is what it is. And shouts out to Adrian Expressions. Um, basically, he flawless. You know, all of those children that that's basically what they're doing. They're not they're not drag queens. They're not in drag. They just they basically gender bend. He flawless. He basically he wears makeup and that's it. I mean he and and his clothes. Are a little fishy as well too, but he's not a drag queen. He is basically just a sissy boy that gender bends. Same thing with Adrian Expressions. Adrian Expressions is a mishmash. He's somewhere right there laying in in, in the middle. Um, he's even told stories of where he um has been mistaken for a girl on the dance floor and things like that. And you'll have that. So just just explaining that a little bit. You're not, when you're gender bending, you are basically, you're just doing you. You're not trying to be mistaken for a girl or anything like that. Because trust me, like I said, I have an alter ego. I have a drag persona. I could be Milan Trejour at any time. And it ain't even a question of whether or not I could pull one and be mistaken for a girl. I mean, that's not. What is there to that? That that don't take a brain surgeon. That's not my thing. That's not, you know, that's not where I live. That's not 
my sector where I live. And there's girls that do that, and that's cool, but that just wasn't my thing. So just so you get a general picture of who I was at the time and how I got down. I, I remember like it was yesterday. So it was like cold outside. So we're saying it was winter time. Um, so all of us were li literally fully dressed. We had like warm clothes on. At the time, my hair, my hair, I was wearing um, a part on the side and it was very much like Aaliyah. That was my everyday hair. Um, and it was pretty long. It was, uh, I was about damn near just like Aaliyah's hair is what I was wearing. Solid black. Um, no makeup because I didn't wear any makeup, you know, day to day. Only if I was in drag. I didn't do um, makeup or anything like that. I had on just a regular, like a black, like bubble style coat. And we basically just all we were kind of, you know, I guess we did all kind of just like blend because that's the same way the three girls that I was actually with were dressed with jeans, boots, you know, the bubble coat, scarf, hat. I don't wear no hats, Joe, but scarf and, you know, and we roll them. And they're cute girls, you know, they're not bad looking girls or anything like that. So this was anyway, it was an eye opener. So we go to this club, we go in, you have to go upstairs and I'm like, this club is okay. It kind of looked like a damn house to me, but I was like, okay, y'all hang with my straight friends. I'm like, all right, y'all. So we're out there. We're there for about 15 minutes. When, you know, this little guy, cute little brown skin guy, he rolls up and he's like, um, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And I'm like, here we go. So he like approached me and all three, you know, all the four of us, rather, we're all standing together. He walked straight up to me. So I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so handle this. So I walked away with him and I said, I okay, come on. So I pull him away from the crowd. Definitely don't want to embarrass him or anything like that. And I said to him, I says, now listen, let me go ahead and explain to you. I already know there's no reason to be embarrassed, but I'm a boy, you know, no need to be embarrassed or anything like that. He was like, oh, wow, man, seriously. And I'm like, yes, yeah, seriously. And I'm like, but it's no big deal. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I said, and actually, if it makes you feel any better, I actually do female impersonation professionally. So you confusing me for a girl, no real big deal. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. He was really cool. He was like, all right, no problem. He said, I thank you for being cool about it. He said, but what I want to do, I want to buy all of y'all a drink. And, you know, and I'm like, and that's cool. That's cool. And that's exactly what happened. He came back over. He bought us all a drink. And um, and then he even made, like, a joke. He was like, he's like, I don't know. He looks just like y'all. You know, he looks like like a girl. He blend right in as a girl. He says, I was a little embarrassed. You know, he said, but he's a real cool dude. And told me what was up. And told me not to be embarrassed. I was a little embarrassed, though. And he laughed it off. And he was like, you know, y'all have a good night, buy us a drink and all of that. So that was that. And I was like, well, that went really well. You know, you, I was like, because, you know, because I could have took a real ugly turn. So this is okay, cool. So we're standing there, about 15 more minutes go by. One of my friends, little girlfriend says to her, mm, for that to happen, this must be a gay bar. Is this a gay bar? I said, oh. Mm. So here's where the plot thickens. So now it's shade. I said, now you know good well this is not a gay bar. I didn't even know nothing about this bar. Didn't even know this bar was here. You all, the three of you all, got together and invited me to this bar. I'm the gay one in the crowd. I didn't know nothing about this bar. So surely it's not a gay bar. It was just a mistake. Something happened. It was a mistake. It's no real big deal. But it's not a gay bar. So the other girl, one of the other girls, she said, I don't know. He was just so comfortable with just coming up to you. Maybe this is a gay bar. I don't know. Maybe I think I want to leave. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, mm, okay. So my friend knows me and she's like, oh shit, this is getting ready to go left because, you know, I'm an ignorant motherfucker when I want to be. And I was feeling very shaded. I did feel shaded. I ain't gonna lie. I felt shady. I was like, this is just stupid. So I said, but I'm not gonna sit here and keep on battling, you know, with them about the fact that 
these three whores knew that they are the ones that actually invited me to come to this. Now, I says, okay, cool. So we, we're leaving. We come down the steps. We go outside. And now at this point, it's really early. It's like early. It's like maybe quarter after 10 or so, quarter after 10, 1030. And um, I'm like, so what now? You know, what now? So, um, yeah, my friend's like, well, okay, so what y'all want to do now? And they're like, mm, I don't know. I'm just out of the mood. Now, I guess I, I, we'll just go in on and go home. So I was like, okay. All right, no problem, whatever. So I said, well, ain't no thing. I said, I'm going to go do whatever. I'm going to go hang out or whatever. Maybe I'll go home and change clothes again. I said, because, you know, I only hang out with you to a certain point and then I always end up because I would always hang out like with my straight friends and then I would switch over and then I go at like maybe one o'clock I go hook up with my gay friends and hang out with them till five six o'clock in the morning that's what it is so I was like you know oh well I said well thanks y'all for inviting me and you know it was cool I'll see y'all another time and I told her well I'll talk to you tomorrow or whatever so I got I left I got in my car and I was like all right and I said well let me go and I said you know what I don't feel like going if I go home then I'm probably not gonna come back out I said I know what I'll do I'm gonna go on down to arts which is like arts is that bar that everybody from the neighborhood kind of just like hangs out at and it's like me it's like a little bit up from our downtown area so I'm like I'm just gonna go ahead and go to arts so I said I'm gonna go ahead and I go see I don't have a problem with going anywhere I want to go even when, you know, no matter what looks I got going on, I've always been able to go anywhere I want to go. I always know somebody when I get there. Because, again, popular, you know, as much as, you know, not, yeah, popular. People know me. Um, and I'm a hairdresser. Nobody pays attention. They know me. Ain't the thing. So I go on. Some will go on the arts. Because, naturally, when I get there, somebody will be there. Some of my cousins, some other people I know. I'll go get me some drinks. And then hit it. You know, no big deal. I'll stay out. Well, when you know, I roll up to arts, I get in the door, you know, they patch down all that. I get in the door and I look, who's down the other end of the bar? These three whores. Boom, boom, boom. The three little pigs sitting down at the end of the bar. Said, not the ones that were going home so fast. Not that you shaded the little fag, honey. I said, are you serious? So I said, okay. So I come in the bar. We're not going to play. No, see, that's one thing we're not going to do. We're not going to play games with each other. I just like they wasn't the fuck up in there. I went on the other side. Surely I see some friends of mine and got the kiki and the cackle and, <laughs> and having cocktails and act just like they wasn't over there. And they see me, and I just kept right on. And then, you know, I was good and high after a little bit. And then my friend wants to come over and wants to explain. Because she already knows, bitch, you done fucked up. You done fucked up, and you know where we're getting ready to go. You know, whenever that conversation does come up, bitch, you already know where it's going to go. Somewhere that you ain't trying to be with me. So she comes and she's like, oh, you know, we were all getting ready to go. And we just kind of decided to come down here. All three of you whores were in different cars. That's just what I told us. All three of you whores were in different cars. You three whores decided to come to arts after I left you. You decided where your next move was. You didn't want me to come, and it was no problem. But it is a public place. So I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I ain't mad with you. I ain't feeling no kind of way about it. But you really would need to get out of my face and go on back over there with your girlfriends. And act like I'm not here because you didn't want me here. So act like I'm not here. I'm going to hang out over here with my girlfriends and everything going to be fine. Toodles. And so, you know, of course, my girlfriends are like, well, what the fuck's going on? I'm like, nothing. Just some bitches being shady. You know how people do. Went on. Now, and she went on over there. And of course, you know, I never, you know, I never let her live, not, let, blah, never let her live it down. I didn't beat her down with it. But don't don't ask me to go with you and your girlfriends nowhere else. Because as far as the way I saw it, and that's what I told her when we talked. So the way I see it, y'all are the ones with the problem, not me. 
I don't have low self-esteem and never have, but obviously the three of you do. How in the fuck do you feel some type of way about a motherfucking man? Like, I don't understand it. Is There's no... Anytime that type of shit comes up, I don't understand any woman feeling any kind of way about any type of a homosexual. I don't get it. I never will. I think it's the dumbest shit in captivity. There is nothing that we have to compete about. Nothing. I'm not you. You're not me. We have nothing in common all like that. There is no competition. There's no competition. A woman is what a woman is. A drag queen or whatever, or fag or whatever you want to call. We are whatever we are. There is no competition. So I, I just, I, I'll never be able to wrap, and this has been years ago, like I said, it was in the 90s. I'll never be able to wrap my mind around how they got to feel in some kind of way with me. And then you shaded me like I did something. I didn't do anything, bitch. I walked in the door with you, stood with you, and he walked up and walked to me. So now all of a sudden, it's the whole bar. This must be a gay bar. He wasn't even a gay man. He wasn't even a gay man. It just was what it was. You know what I mean? Child, that was a mess. That was a mess. And yeah. And to this day, I, I've never accepted another invitation from that friend to go anywhere with her and her friends. Any friends. I don't give a fuck. Where she met him, when she met him. Mm -mm. Insecure breeds more insecure. And I ain't got time to be trying to hang out with no insecure motherfuckers. So, anyway. Okay, so. I know y'all gonna have a good time down in them comments. Saying whatever it is you have to say. I'm interested to, to see what you all have to say about this. And while you're in doing that. Make sure you leave me some comments and let me know. Did you like story time? Do you think we should continue on about it? Um, let me know what you want to do. 2017 is fast approaching and I'm trying to put some things together, um, you know, to build, to build our channel and see where we're going to go. Let me know if this is something that you guys want to continue to do. Trust me, I got tons of stories, tons of stories, not just that kind of story, but Stories of, you know, I've been around in my travels, child. And look out for that, definitely. Look out for the In My Travels series. That's actually another um, segment that I'm definitely going to try to introduce into the channel, which is going to be called In My Travels. Um, and then there'll be In My Travels shorts. They will actually contain um, more current events and entertainment news and that kind of thing. I think we're going to give that a shot, so. All right, let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to you guys soon. Later.